this is Kimberly from Lakeside Loops and today I'm going to show you how to make this crochet clutch. Um, you will need a five millimeter crochet hook. You are also going to need some raffia yarn. So I used Wool in the Gang Ra Ra Raffia in Ivory White. Um, you could obviously use any color or any type of raffia yarn that you'd like. Normally I would say when I use raffia, in pre when I've used it in previous patterns, I've said you can substitute and use cotton or a tape yarn, but for this project, for this clutch, I really do think using raffia is the best option because it creates sort of a stiff um, bag that holds its shape. I think if you use cotton, your bag is going to be a little bit too heavy and it's going to not stay straight when you hold it if you know what I mean. I think it'll be too flimsy if you use a heavier weight yarn such as cotton and with the tape yarn I don't think it's firm enough. So I think if you can get your hands on some raffia and I've included some links in the pattern uh, that would work best. And you don't even need, like this is how much I have left of what I purchased. So it doesn't even take a whole roll. You are also going to need some sharp scissors and around a two inch piece, like two inches this way, piece of cardboard or cardstock, a debit card would work, a gift card, um, a business card. This is actually two and a quarter inch, but just something that's around two inches. This is what we're going to be using to make our tassels. Okay, so as with all of my video tutorials, this is just meant as a guide, like a visual aid to help you with the written pattern. So you will still need to go to my website, lakesideloops.com, where you can find the written pattern for free on the blog, and you can also download a really inexpensive PDF from Etsy or Ravelry. Um, so I'm just gonna show you bits and pieces of the pattern, parts that you might find trickier or want the extra visual, visual aid for, for the specific you know, stitch counts and row by row, you're going to need to find the written pattern. So just head to my website, again, lakesideloops.com, and everything that you need to know is there. All right, so I have skipped ahead a bit, and I have done a chain of 46, and now we are going to single crochet in the second chain from your hook. So not this first chain, but this second chain, we're going to make a single crochet, and we're going to single crochet all the way down our chain until we only have one stitch left. So we're gonna go all the way down until there's only one left. All right, so I've single crocheted all the way down to the end of my chain. There's only one stitch left, and we're going to work four single crochets into this last stitch. And this is gonna kinda of help us turn because we're gonna start working back down the other side of our chain. So this is gonna kinda of take us around the corner here. So one, two, three, four. Now we're going to be working along the other side of our chain all the way back down. Again, just single crochets. So for row two, we're going to half double crochet. I've already done a couple of stitches. We're gonna half double crochet, not into the stitch, but just into the front loop only. So we're not going through both loops. We're just going through the front loop. And this is going to create a ridge or a bit of a ribbed look on the other side. So you'll see what we did there. It created a bit of a lip and then the back of the half double crochet, the back bar actually also creates another ridge or rib. It creates this texture here, which I just think is so interesting and makes it look a little more woven. I just love the look of this. So this is the rib from the single crochet and, and doing your half double crochet in the front loop on the back side. And then this rib is created just the back of the half double crochet has this back bar. So you get this, this look. So I've skipped ahead a little bit here and I've already completed one side. I've seamed it together um, by using a slip stitch. I'm gonna show you the other side. So here is where I've placed my stitch marker 
in the 44th stitch starting from the corner. I've counted all the way to number 44 and now I'm going to take my corner and bring it up to that stitch and this will be where we slip stitch all along here back down to our new corner, the bottom of the bag. So we're gonna start by insert, uh, inserting our hook into this corner stitch and the 44th stitch, which is marked. We're going to grab, we're gonna grab some of our yarn, our raffia, and we're just going to slip stitch into both sides here, all the way down. So just to show you that a little bit closer up again, I'm inserting my hook into this side, into the corresponding stitch on the back side, or the other piece, pulling my yarn through and then pulling it through. So again, inserting hook, inserting hook, grabbing yarn, pulling through both and through the loop on your hook all the way down until you get to the corner. All right, so now that we've seamed our sides, um, your clutch is basically done. You could weave in your ends, obviously, where mine are still hanging out here, um, but the part that I love almost the most is the tassels. So I'm gonna show you how to do that next, but you could leave it plain like this and I think it looks really sweet. Maybe add like a little fringe tassel here or like a pom-pom string here. Lots of cute little options. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to make the tassels. Um, this is how much I have left over from my little ball of the Patton's Cotton after making all 10 tassels in white. So you're still going to have a little bit left over. If you're making multiple colors, you're obviously going to have quite a bit of leftovers um, from the balls that you purchase because it doesn't take a lot of yarn to make the tassels. So to get started, we're going to cut, we'll do it in pink, we're going to cut a piece of yarn that's about six inches long. Now we're going to lay that across so horizontally across the top of our card. And we're going to begin wrapping our yarn around the card and over top of that piece of yarn. We want to do it 50 times. One, two, three, four. All right, so I've wrapped my yarn around 50 times. Now I'm going to take this piece of yarn that I had in behind. I'm gonna kind of even it out and I'm gonna tie it in a knot, actually two knots, around all the yarn that I've wrapped. Just like that. Now we're gonna pull this off of the card and we're gonna center this so that it's at the top of our wrapped bunch of yarn. Now we're going to cut a 12 inch piece of yarn, or around 12 inches, you don't have to be exact. And we're going to tie this about a half an inch below the top of our little bundle here. Just like that, I'm gonna tie two knots. Now we're gonna wrap these long ends around just a couple, well, we'll do that a couple of times. All right, so once you've wrapped your yarn around and tied it, this is the back of your tassel and this is the front of your tassel and we're gonna cut the end here so just gonna go through cut that now we're going to trim the end I'd say cut another about a half an inch off 
so that everything's nice and even. So to do this, I try and get all the little strings nice and straight. Make sure you don't cut these two pieces. So keep those up here. And we want to kind of gather it together. All right. Now my trick to giving your little tassel the best haircut is to sort of hold it like this at the end and try to get it, let me zoom in here. So my trick is to kind of bunch it all together and that helps you to see any bits that are uneven. And then I kind of go around in a circle and check it from all the angles. Now, of course, I'm being really picky. You don't have to care this much about how even your tassel ends are. I'm just, yeah, being too picky, I'm sure. But anyway, so that is your tassel. All right, so I've skipped ahead and we're going to attach, I'm gonna show you how I've attached my tassels to my bag. So you can see I've already attached all except one. I started around, I started wrapping around the third uh, post or the third stitch over and then I've spaced them out so that it's every sixth stitch. I've wrapped it around the post. So I will show you with this last one just how I did it. You can attach them any way you want. Doesn't, I don't think it matters a whole lot, but just in case you're curious. I do it so the good side is facing up and I lay it right here and I count over to the sixth stitch. So one, two, three, four, five. This is the sixth. I'm going to pull these two ends on either side of that stitch. One on that side. one on the other side. And now I'm just gonna tie them in a basic knot. Now I'm gonna flip this down. So now the, the wonky side's facing up and I'm gonna go in and pull those two threads back through to this side. There's one. There's the other one and I'm just gonna tie another knot like so, and then we would want to weave in all of these ends and cut them shorter. They obviously don't need to be this long. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope that you enjoyed this video tutorial and this pattern. I hope that you enjoy using your clutch this summer. I can't wait to see your pictures on Instagram and Facebook, so please make sure to tag me at Lakeside Loops. Uh, thank you so, so much for your interest in this design and please subscribe to these video tutorials. Um, I would love for you to come back and watch more. I have many more free patterns coming up over the summer. Mm -hmm.